Illinois has a budget for the first time in over two years. Naperville News 17's Evan Summers has more from some of our local lawmakers. The state of Illinois went 736 days without a budget. However, one was officially passed on July 6th, following over two weeks of special legislative session in the Capitol. After the budget package was approved by lawmakers, Governor Bruce Rauner vetoed it on July 4th. However, both the Illinois House and Senate voted to override his veto. The new budget spends over $36 billion this fiscal year, partially funded by a sizable tax increase. The personal income tax rate goes from 3.75 to 4.95%, a 32% increase. And the corporate tax rate goes from 5.25 to 7%. Republican State Senator Michael Connolly, who voted no on both the budget and the veto override, issued a statement on the budget passing, which said in part, We had an incredible opportunity to find compromise on a budget and reforms that would put our state on track. Instead, we are left with a plan that does not include property tax relief, workers' compensation reform, or one that adequately addresses our $130 billion pension debt. Republican Representative Grant Worley also voted no on the budget. We, we simply cannot continue to shovel money into state government without reforms. Uh, I understand that we do need revenue to get out of this mess, but to, to do it without those reforms is simply irresponsible. However, Democratic State Representative Stephanie Kifowit, who voted yes on both measures, feels that passing the budget was a necessary step for Illinois. We had to stop the impasse so that the state of Illinois can start functioning again. This is the first step of getting the state of Illinois back on track, and there's still a lot of work that needs to be done, and hopefully we can get things, more items done in a bipartisan fashion. Illinois' budget impasse was the longest for any state in our nation's history. Reporting for Naperville News 17, I'm Evan Summers. During the budget impasse, Illinois racked up $15 billion in past due bills.